50 years of St. Louis food, music, and pop culture. That's next on City Corner. I'm Steve Potter and welcome to City Corner. Well, Blueberry Hill is celebrating 50 years as an iconic restaurant and music venue on the Del Mar Loop. And Joe Edwards started it all. He's our guest today. Hi, Joe, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure being here. <laughs> I have a very important question for you. Do you remember me? Now, that's, I mean that as a joke because, um, you know, most people when they come on a show or interview do remember. You have been interviewed so many times by so many people over so many years, I wouldn't be surprised if you don't remember my interviews. No, I do remember doing an interview with you long ago, and uh, now we're doing it right now. Yeah, I think we did radio and TV, and I was down there to cover the Walk of Fame a couple of times. Um, I'm kind of curious, if somebody is watching this show right now, I find it hard to believe, they've never heard of Blueberry Hill, maybe they just moved to town or something. Blueberry Hill is actually in University City, the Del Mar Loop, St. Louis is uh, Del Mar Loop is what we call it. So if you go back 50 years ago, how would you describe the loop and the building that you're in now? Well, the loop had been in great decline for many years as many streets around our country had been and had been kind of given up for dead. And uh, it's half the storefronts were either vacant or had Venetian blinds on them being used as warehouse space. And the building that we moved into um, had water coming in from the roof because it wasn't fixed and all that. And, but it was inexpensive rent because that's how we opened on ten and a half thousand dollars of borrowed money from friends. We didn't have a lot to operate with. And, uh, but I, I liked the area a lot. I liked the architecture that was still left, left in the area. I loved the fact that Washington University was right near it and, uh, and, and just had great potential. Well, where were you in your life then? Were you a bar owner then, or were you in the business, or what, what were you all about? No, I, I, I knew more from the other side of the bar, the customer <laughs> side, but um, <laughs> I had never been in, in business in, in that way. No, I, I went to John Burroughs here in St. Louis and then graduated from Duke University and did a little army time and then came back and still didn't know what I wanted to do in life. And I figured, well, I have this incredible record collection of 30,045 RPM records that used to be in jukeboxes back then, long before CDs or the internet. And also a lot of pop culture items that I had all boxed up in, in my apartment. And I figured, gosh, I'm gonna put these in display cases and program the jukebox, change the songs every two weeks, except for Blueberry Hill, and, uh, and hope that people enjoyed it. And it was a, a great risk, but a great uh, love affair with that kind of a feel where people could come in and enjoy life, play music, put their troubles behind them for a couple of hours, and little by little, it, it worked. Within a week of opening Blueberry Hill, I realized if I didn't work on the Del Mar Loop in general, that I wouldn't make it at Blueberry Hill. So I tried to, or I did start to organize the merchants and talk to the police and city hall people. Let's do this, let's put dust and dawn lights in the alleys and under canopies, let's do Let's have more trash receptacles to reduce trash. Let's put in flower planters to make it more colorful. And just through the years, little by little, organically, it worked out. Well, you just described what uh, the, the Del Mar Loop and uh, your building was like 50 years ago. How about if someone had never heard of it today, how would you describe it today by contrast? I, I guess I would describe Blueberry Hill as, as being uh, a, a really good restaurant and music club filled with pop culture and memorabilia. And that kind of sums up what people find when they come from around the country and around the world. And people do come from around the world. Uh, it, it's, it's pretty great to see people from Japan and Brazil and the United Kingdom. Uh, we're looking at some pictures right now and you can see it's sort of a collection of things, lots of pictures of celebrities that have been there. And t tell me what's all going on. Well, the, right now we're looking at five Whirlers or jukeboxes, and now the exterior sign where the two dancers are dancing on, on the uh, marquee and the rotating messages on the marquee, and welcome to the loop. I always like to welcome people and, and let them feel comfortable uh, any place that I create. 
I wanted to ask you about that sign because that's the one now. But I'm wondering if that's evolved over the years too. Like I picture maybe back in 1972 when you opened, I don't know, you made a little cardboard sign with a magic marker or something. You're very close. Um, <laughs> back, back then it was a four by eight sheet of plywood where I drilled different holes around it and put Christmas lights in, blue and gold Christmas lights. That's how inexpensive that first sign was. Then that was replaced later on, a couple of years later, with a jukebox themed sign. And then it was replaced by another one and now finally the, the final one that is, is gonna be there in perpetuity. <laughs> I wanna ask you about your wife, Linda, because I know that she's played a role in this over the years too. And of course, you're, you're always the one giving the interviews, but uh, she deserves a call out, doesn't she? Oh, she does. She, she created one of the coolest display windows in America. It's been written about in national magazines and all, where I guess based on the influence of the old department store animated windows around Christmas time, but she does it all year round, where in the corner window you can have, uh, on Halloween it could be Rosemary's baby shower, you know, just something really unusual. Our, our Easter Bunny's kitchen, or trimming Santa's tree, more positive with, with live people in it, volunteer live people. Uh, right now, currently, uh, there's um, the world's largest dart is there, and it's partly outside the corner window and inside the window, where it's, it almost looks like the dart gods threw this dart down from the skies, and it busted through the limestone column into the triple 20 on the dartboard, and it's pretty great. The dart players from around the country enjoy that one. We just saw a picture of you and your wife, Linda, a second ago. Um, was the whole idea for Blueberry Hill, was it something you came up together? Was maybe this one of your crazy ideas at first and she was skeptical? I'm just wondering what the backstory is. Uh, I started working on it before we met. Um, I, I lived oh. in an apartment on North Taylor in, in the city of St. Louis at the time and had all these boxes of things and started looking around for a place and then we met and started dating and, and then went ahead and, and did it together. So what role has she played the whole time? I mean, did you make her bartend or clean bus tables in the beginning or, or what? Oh yeah, we, we both did everything in the beginning. I mean, I, I didn't have a day off for the first 18 months. I mean, literally. I would take an order, slice the meat, make the sandwich, deliver it, draw the beer, bust the tables, wash the glasses. Uh, there were nights where I worked totally by myself uh, because that's how slow things were at that time. Almost went out of business three times in the first two years yeah. primarily because I banned two thirds of our customers. I wasn't gonna put up with rude people or dangerous people. And at that time we didn't have our two daughters yet so I could risk a lot more. And, and, um, but it set a tone for the loop as far as safety goes and making people feel comfortable where a single woman could come in or grandparents with a grandchild could come in and know that they would be looked after. I think people, a lot of people would have a hard time believing that if they hadn't been there then, because if you go today, you know, there are a lot of great businesses on that strip and that's not the vibe you get at all. No, it's, it's one of the safest city streets in the Midwest now. Uh, the pedestrian traffic is just amazing. All the great independent stores are wonderful, uh, not just restaurants, so we have the biggest selection of cuisines of any place in, in St. Louis uh, it represented there, but also art galleries and clothing boutiques and one of the best record stores in the United States. There's so many different things, not to mention the music venues like the Pageant and Del Mar Hall, the Moonrise Hotel with the world's largest man-made rotating moon. I like to do whimsical things, loopish things. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, and so, yeah, no, it's, it's an incredibly, wonderfully safe street. So I'm thinking back to the er early years when your wife Linda was uh, bussing tables and you were like putting cheeseburgers together and um, stuff like that. When did famous people start coming? That was probably a slow evolution, right? I, it, it was, although early on, the jukebox was a, a big draw because of the changing of the records. And probably the most famous early customer was the great actor, John Goodman. And he grew up in Afton, St. Louis County, and he and his friends would come in you know, once or twice a week and just pump quarter after quarter in the jukebox and play air guitar and sing along to the was songs. Was this before I went to Springfield to go to college? Do you know? Uh, no, it was, just, it was just after, I think, at that time. Um, but it was, they really enjoyed it and I really enjoyed um, just singing along sometimes with them. They, they just had such a, a joyous spirit about life. But and they know, added that, a lot to the atmosphere that John way. Goodman was a regular before he became famous, but uh, there are a lot of famous people now that have been regulars after they were famous. Yeah, people from 
all over come in and, and unexpectedly a lot of the time. Just, you know, just they, they just come in, they've heard about it, they know that they'll be treated with respect and not mobbed by people and, and all. And, and uh, it, it's pretty cool the number of people that come through there. There are hundreds of pictures on the wall now, which at first I was hesitant to put up because I didn't want people to think, oh, you know, this guy's ego is something. But uh, customers and staff kept saying, oh, dude, people are going to like those. And so now it's grown from six to start with to you know several hundred. Yeah. So Blueberry Hill, you're celebrating 50 years, and you're you're making it a, a whole year long celebration, aren't you? Yeah, we are. I mean, why why not? I, I want to stop you, Joe, because uh, here's one of your regulars. Yeah, the great Chuck Berry, the father of rock and roll, the first person inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and the first person inducted in the St. Louis Walk of Fame. He played in Blueberry Hills Duck Room, 209 concerts. Yeah, the last couple of years, didn't, Unbelievable. He, it was a monthly gig for him, right? Oh, yeah. And of course, uh, the, the, the Walk of Fame. Yeah, I founded the St. Louis Walk of Fame in 1988 to highlight great St. Louisans so that not only St. Louisans could learn more about how people from St. Louis have affected our, our culture on a national level, but also international travelers could get more respect for St. Louis and think, wow, I didn't know someone sold us from St. Louis. That's great. And it was real important to me to have the informative plaques, the informational plaques, educational plaques, in the sidewalk along with the star. So if you didn't recognize the name right away, you could learn something about them and then research later on. A real quick story before we take break. Uh, just uh, This is just an iconic memory for me and uh, Blueberry Hill is I've been doing this show coming up to 22 years, believe it or not. Before this, I did a, I, I worked on a show for Charter. And I went down to cover the Walk of Fame. It was 2001. And uh, you wouldn't remember this, but uh, I was interviewing you, and I'll never forget, as I'm interviewing you, I look to my right, and about three feet away watching is Chuck Berry. And then I turn to my left, and about five feet over there is Ike Turner. And I thought, I'm standing here between these. It, it just kind of, that'll be something I'll never forget. You, music royalty. You were right there. It was. And glad to be. We need to take a break. Uh, we're talking with Joe Edwards about the 50th anniversary of Blueberry Hill, and we'll be back right after this. nothing more powerful than imagination. But don't just imagine. Use STEM to change the world. Who's with me? It's gonna hurt tomorrow. If she can STEM, so can you. Find out more at She Can STEM. The Missouri Botanical Garden is loved by green thumbs and non-gardening types alike because you can play. You can relax. There's always something new to experience, no matter the time of day or the season. And learn about conservation and one-of-a-kind plants. So come and experience St. Louis. If you smoked, this new lung cancer screening could save your life. Visit SaveByTheScan.org.
I'm Steve Potter. Welcome back to City Corner. We are talking to Joe Edwards today about the 50th anniversary of Blueberry Hill, the iconic Del Mar Loop location, the restaurant, the music venue, it's where the Walk of Fame is. Um, and Joe is here celebrating all year. Indeed. One thing I wanted to ask you about was a beer, an unopened beer. I want to be sure and be clear to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a very special beer, and I want you to explain it to me. Well, in 1981, I figured Blueberry Hill had such a deep tradition in music that I was going to come out with a, my own beer, rock and roll beer, and, and have rock and roll beer logo on one side, and a guy that I refer to as Johnny Longshot, kind of a Marlon Brando, James Deanish guy with a black motorcycle jacket on the other side saying, I sold my soul for rock and roll. Let me spin this around so we can see that. There we go. And, and it was just kind of a, a, a fun project. I, 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 it was about 10 years too early before the craft beer craze hit. But I did export it to New York, San Francisco, Japan, Guam, um, and all until I got too busy with the loop to keep it going. But now Four Hands Brewery, a wonderful local brewery, is, has just brought it back in a 16-ounce can. So while it lasts, it's out there. Do I get to keep this one? You, you may keep that okay, one. Okay, I'll just put this right back here. Hey, I want to talk about, uh, of course, everybody these days thinks... Um, about the music part of it, but I'm, I'm curious about the food. Uh, way back when, didn't the, if I'm remembering right, this was before I was even ever there, but didn't it, like the only thing to eat maybe was like you had some kind of hot dog machine? And... Yeah, with, with the lack of money to do a full-fledged kitchen, all we start off with one of those little hot dog machines like this with a little bun warmer for the hot dog buns and pickled eggs, and uh, and, and that was about it in the, in the beginning. And beer nuts, we had good beer nuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, then, then shortly we were able to open our first super small kitchen. And it was real important to me to have hamburgers on the menu. First of all, I think I love hamburgers and I think most people do. Uh, and and, so and that, he, here, here's a shot. Well, we'll go back. There's a shot of the great. There we go. Oh, yes. That's the West, the current Western burger with the onion ring and the sauce bread cheddar and the bacon and all. No, no calories in that, right? No, no. Well, just a, a, a handful. <laughs> but we also have vegan burgers, vegetarian burgers. Now we have about six or seven different burgers for everybody's tastes. Yeah. And for a second there, we'll go back to there was a picture of you and your wife, Linda. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mentioned her before, but maybe you want to give her a shout out. Did, did she? I, I'm curious. I never see her like interviewed. And I would understand maybe if she doesn't want to be front and center. A lot of people don't want to be. No, she's very shy about interviews and all that. Um, but okay. that's, a great, that's a great early picture. <laughs> Yesterday when we were young. <laughs> <laughs> now that you're singing, I haven't asked you where the name came from. Of course, we all know Blueberry Hill is part of a famous song. Yeah, it was, I, it, I, it was influenced by the Fats Domino version of Blueberry Hill. There were big band versions back in the 1940s, but his 1956 version with that lilting, the beautiful voice, I found my thrill boom, 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 mm -hmm. on Blueberry Hill. I figured, gosh, what a great tagline. What a great positive thing. And I thought that came so easily. I started looking through all my records just to find out a, a better music-related title, and I couldn't. I just went back to my original impulse and called it Blueberry Hill. Now, we already talked about that you're responsible for the St. Louis Walk of Fame, and there are, is it 150 or something close to that stars that you have along Del Mar, and they each honor a person. They could be famous for a number of different reasons and people from 200 years ago till today. Yeah, that, that's what's so exciting to show. I, I think St. Louis has influenced our culture nationally and internationally more than any other city, except maybe some of the really old ones like Philadelphia, Boston, and New York. But other than that, we're way ahead of Los Angeles and San Francisco and Chicago, I think, as far as uh, Im impacting culture in music and journalism and sports and also science and all, it's, it's remarkable. Um, and I said, I think it's 150 roughly, but I went and I looked at the list a little while ago and I have interviewed like over 10 of those people just at different times in my career, nothing to do with Blueberry Hill, which I thought was kind of cool. I just wanted to run down my list and I might ask you about one or two of them. Sure. Um, these are all people I interviewed totally separate from Blueberry Hill on the radio about other things and they just happened to be there. Gio Obata. Yeah, Gio Obata was one of the greatest architects ever in the United States and, uh, and came to St. Louis. He, 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 his family was interned during World War II. Hor horrible type of stuff in our country's history. But he was one of the main partners of HOK, the great architectural right. firm who's done stuff all around the world. Right. Also, Ridley Pearson, a um, world-famous uh, novelist. I used to have interview him on St. Louis Public Radio, but he had a St. Louis connection. Was it his wife? I can't remember now. 
Well, plus he, he plays music too. I mean, people right. don't think about that, but I think he and other famous authors kind of get together and play music occasionally too. He was a super nice guy. Yeah. Uh, Christine Brewer, I got to know really well over the years. She's an international opera star. Amazing voice. And one of the nicest people you'll and ever meet. Very down to earth, <laughs> wonderfully down to earth. But oh my gosh, what a voice. Hey, I've got a couple of pictures of you I want to show. I think you might be with people we might recognize. Or maybe it's just you. Would you tell me what you're doing, if you can remember. I'm, I'm, I'm putting up our, our liquor license on the wall. We have to display things. So <laughs> that was, they wouldn't give me a liquor license for the first couple of years. A beer license, but not a liquor license. So I w that was kind of a big moment. Okay, I think we got another one. Oh, the jukebox. Yeah, I've yeah. never seen a jukebox look like that. Yeah, they, 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 uh, it was a Seaberg that kind of people referred to it as the washing machine because it kind of looked like an old style washing well, machine. Well, it would have had vinyl records, I mean, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Wow. And uh, then another food item because we talked about your burgers and things. So are you known for ravioli too? Yeah, a lot of people really like ours. And, and there are other restaurants, especially on the hill in St. Louis, that have great ravioli. But our, ours is good and people that come in from other states are freaked out by it. ravioli, oh my gosh, I've never tasted this before, and they, and they absolutely love it. I'm proud of our kitchen staff. I mean, they're people that have been there over 40 years in the kitchen. Con food consistency is the key to a successful restaurant. Right, and it's always gotta be the same. We always are able to do that through the loyal group we have working with us. I'm interested, we've talked uh, all about a lot of the famous people that um, drop by and stuff. I I'm curious about this. If a famous person comes by, do you always know it? I'm wondering if, do their PR person call them and let you know, or does sometimes someone famous is there and you didn't expect them? Oh, most of the time they just show up. They're, they're in town playing, you know, 20,000 capacity place, but they show up. Uh, other times they might call ahead of time, very seldom, but uh, they do. Here's a couple other people I interviewed that I also uh, saw their star in the Hall of Fame, uh, David Sanborn. Oh, yes, a, a magnificent St. Louis and one of the most talented people that he's played with so many of the superstars over the last 40 years. It's, it's incredible. Clark Terry. He played his own flugelhorn when he was inducted. And that was a real honor, a real thrill for me when he was inducted in the St. Louis Walk of Fame. He brought his flugelhorn and played a few notes. Right. We have a little video I want to share because I'm um, speaking of well-known people that have uh, frequented Blueberry Hill. Um, I guess it was your people. Someone put together a video, and they're all sort of saying hi to you and best wishes because um, you, September 8th was your big celebration, although you're celebrating your 50 year for the entire year. Correct. It was September 8th. So why don't we take a look at this video and share it with our audience. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Blueberry Hill. Happy birthday to you. To my good friend, Joe Edwards, happy 50 year anniversary at Blueberry Hill. Hi, I'm Tim Convey. I have so many great memories of Blueberry Hill. I saw so many shows down in the Duck Room. I saw an ME330 show down there that blew my mind. I also for a long time hosted a monthly comedy show in the Duck Room uh, and we had so many great nights with great comics. But my favorite memory, Blueberry Hill, is the night that my band Ludo opened up in the Duck Room for our hero, Chuck Berry. One of the best nights of my life. I still have the picture. Hangs in my house to this day. So thanks, Blueberry Hill, and congrats on 50 years. Hi, this is John Goodman. I just want to wish Joe and Blueberry Hill a happy 50th anniversary. It's a place where I had my first legal drink there 49 years ago. One to grow on. Thanks, Joe. The Cardinals and the Blues and Blueberry Hill. Happy 50th anniversary to a St. Louis institution. Andy Cohen here. I want to wish Joe Edwards and Blueberry Hill a happy 50th anniversary. I've had so many great times at Blueberry Hill starting, well, when I was underage. And they let me in. I must have had a great fake ID. And then, uh, and then we would go in college every year. That was the spot that we would go meet all of our high school friends. And it's just been an amazing meeting place for me and my friends, for so many of your 50 years, happy anniversary, Blueberry Hill. Love it, love it, love it there. Hey, it's Bob Costas, and congratulations to my friend Joe Edwards and to Blueberry Hill 
on their golden anniversary, 50 years of being a St. Louis institution. One of the great burgers anywhere on the planet, open until the wee hours, hosted Chuck Berry forever, duck room downstairs, all kinds of cool retro memorabilia. And on top of it, Joe Edwards, one of the great St. Louisans, did me one of the all-time solids. In the St. Louis Walk of Fame, I was lucky to get a star, but he put it in between Stan Musial and Chuck Berry right at the entrance of Blueberry Hill. Talk about a high tide raising all boats. Thank you, Joe. I owe you. And so does all of St. Louis for Blueberry Hill and so much more. Wow. <laughs> Bob Costas likes your burgers. He does. I have one comment I want to say. We were, when John Goodman was talking, he said he had his first legal age drink. Did you, right when he said that, he, he shifted his eyes over to the side. I think he snuck in earlier. <laughs> it's, it's very possible. Um, one time he said, and I enjoyed that one every bit as much as I enjoyed the ones before. But he didn't say that this time, which was thoughtful. <laughs> Joe, we've got less than a minute left, but I, I want you to just kind of tease a little something. Not a lot of people know about this, but you've got something new going uh, very close down the street. What, what do you want to tell us? Um, across from the Moonrise Hotel, I'm building a new building called Magic Mini Golf, and it'll have 18 holes of indoor miniature golf and two lanes of shuffleboard and a small Ferris wheel that I got from the Muni, Muni Opera a few years ago. Just a five cab Ferris wheel that three kids or two adults could fit on. It'd be mm -hmm. all indoors so you can have anniversaries, business meetings, just date nights. You know nights. what you're gonna call it? or Magic Mini Golf. It'll be, and the <laughs> sign is gonna be cool as can be. Are, do you have a time frame on that? Uh, this coming January or February, I'm guessing it might be ready to open. Anything else planned celebrating the year in particular from now on, or are you just every day going to be a celebration or what? Yeah, there'll be more things coming up, I think, just some, some meeting old friends that couldn't make it on the exact day and stuff that come in, came in. Um, one woman that worked there 48 years ago flew in from Florida, for example. So there'll be other ones coming through when their vacations allow it. Well, I hope everybody will get back to Blueberry Hill. The pandemic's over. Everybody get back to the Del Mar Loop, Blueberry Hill. Joe Edwards, thank you for 50 years of memories. And um, you can follow Blueberry Hill on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, or I say go by and ask for a rock and roll beer. That's what I would do. Joe Edwards, it's been a pleasure to see you again. And again, congratulations on thank 50 you. years. Thank you very much, thanks. I'm Steve Potter, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on City Corner.